The Articles of Faith were written in 1842 by the prophet Joseph Smith in response to a request from John Wentworth, a Chicago newspaper editor who wanted information concerning the history and beliefs of the church. They were first published by the church in 1843 in the Times and Seasons in Nauvoo, Illinois, and were included in the first publication of the Pearl of Great Price in 1851. The Articles of Faith were written under inspiration from God and are evidence of the divine calling of the prophet Joseph Smith. They contain direct and simple statements of a number of doctrines and principles of our religion. The Articles of Faith can be found in the scriptures known as the Pearl of Great Price. The Articles of Faith of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints Number 1. We believe in God, the Eternal Father, and in His Son, Jesus Christ, and in the Holy Ghost. Understanding the nature of God is essential for His children to comprehend His plan of salvation. Joseph Smith said, If men do not comprehend the character of God, they do not comprehend themselves. Article of Faith number 2 we believe that men will be punished for their own sins and not for Adam's transgression. In this article of faith, we learn that God is a just God. Children are pure and need no baptism until the age of accountability. In the Book of Mormon, in Moroni 8 verse 8, we read, Wherefore, little children are whole, for they are not capable of committing sin. Wherefore, the curse of Adam is taken from them in me, that it hath no power over them. And also in verse 12, we read, Little children are alive in Christ, even from the foundation of the world. If it not so, God is a partial God, and also a changeable God, and a respecter of persons. For how many little children have died without baptism? Article of Faith number 3. We believe that through the atonement of Christ, all mankind may be saved, by obedience to the laws and ordinances of the gospel. In this statement we learn that this is the path, as shown by way of example by Jesus Christ himself. The power of his everlasting atonement is strong enough to save all mankind. Article of Faith number 4 We believe that the first principles and ordinances of the Gospel are first, faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, second, repentance, third, baptism by immersion for the remission of sins, fourth, laying on of hands for the gift of the Holy Ghost. In this fourth article of faith, we learn that these are the fundamentals of the Gospel of Christ, the good news that through these ordinances, a person may plant his or her feet on the path that leads toward salvation. Absolutely, we are saved by grace. This is because we are all unprofitable servants and all fallen and sin. The prophet Nephi explains that these fundamental principles exist over time and are not simply one-time events. He says, And then are ye in the straight and narrow path which leads to eternal life, yea, ye have entered by the gate, speaking of baptism, ye have done according to the commandments of the Father and the Son, and ye have received the Holy Ghost, which witnesses of the Father and the Son, unto the fulfilling of the promise which he hath made, that if ye entered in by the way ye should receive. And now, my beloved brethren, after ye have gone into this straight and narrow path, I would ask if all is done. Behold, I say unto you, Nay, for ye have not come thus far, save it were by the word of Christ, with unshaken faith in him, relying wholly upon the merits of him who is mighty to save. Wherefore, ye must press forward with a steadfastness in Christ, having a perfect brightness of hope, and a love of God, and of all men. Wherefore. If ye should press forward, feasting upon the word of Christ, and endure to the end, behold, thus saith the Father, ye shall have eternal life. And now, behold, my beloved brethren, this is the way, and there is none other way nor name given under heaven, whereby man can be saved in the kingdom of God. And now, behold, this is the doctrine of Christ, and the only and true doctrine of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost, which is one God, without end. Amen. Therefore, we learn that faith in Christ, the first principle of the gospel, is never ending. And as we exercise our faith, the Lord does grow our faith, even confirming it to us that it is good, and it continues to grow throughout our lives and beyond. 
Of course, because of the fall and the nature of man, repentance, the second principle of the gospel, is an ongoing process as well. We must continually repent and rely on the grace of God to cleanse our sins each day throughout our entire life. For sure, baptism is a one-time event, right? Or we don't get baptized over and over, do we? Baptism is a commandment from God and is the way we enter the path to follow Christ. The ordinance of baptism by immersion represents the death and burial of Jesus Christ and his resurrection, his coming up out of the tomb. Similarly, when we are baptized, our old self dies and we are reborn in Christ as we re-emerge up out of the water. Through baptism, we are making a covenant to follow him. Baptismal covenants are renewed each Sabbath day when Christ's followers partake of the sacrament. So, in this regard, the one-time event of baptism becomes a perpetual process of weekly renewal where we again covenant to take upon the name of thy son and always remember him and keep his commandments which he has given them. After baptism, we receive the gift of the Holy Ghost, the fourth principle of the gospel. Again, this ordinance is performed once in a person's earthly life shortly after they enter the waters of baptism. But receiving the Holy Ghost to be one's constant companion is a lifelong endeavor to always have the Spirit to be with them. The Spirit of God will not dwell in unholy places and therefore it is incumbent upon the person to cleanse him or herself from all sin and unholiness so that the Holy Ghost will be a constant companion to guide his or her thoughts and actions. Article of Faith number 5. We believe that a man must be called of God by prophecy and by the laying on of hands, by those who are in authority to preach the gospel and administer in the ordinances thereof. God is a God of order, and therefore it is His way to call men and women to serve and preach the gospel and to minister to His children. This is done by a calling through His priesthood, and these are set apart to do this by the laying on of hands. By this way, order is maintained in the building up of the kingdom of Christ here on earth. Article of Faith number 6. We believe in the same organization that existed in the primitive church, namely apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, evangelists, and so forth. In the latter days, the organization and Christ's priesthood was restored in its fullness for the benefit of mankind today. Article of Faith 7. We believe in the gift of tongues, prophecy, revelation, visions, healing, interpretation of tongues, and so forth. This means that we believe in a God of miracles. We believe in the actual Christ who performed many miracles during his mortal ministry. This means that we can experience real miracles in our lives, even in our day. God wants to bless us and will perform miracles in your life as you choose to follow him. Article of Faith number 8. We believe the Bible to be the Word of God as far as it is translated correctly. We also believe the Book of Mormon to be the Word of God. The fullness of the Gospel is contained in the Bible. The fullness of the Gospel is also contained in the Book of Mormon, a record of a remnant of people of the tribes of Joseph who were led out of Jerusalem to the American continent before the destruction of Jerusalem around 600 BC. Article of Faith 9. We believe all that God has revealed, all that he does now reveal, and we believe that he will yet reveal many great and important things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Has revelation ended? Are the heavens closed? Has God given all his instruction and left us to our own devices? No. God has promised that he will reveal his word to his children in these latter days. It is revelation to have the Spirit testify to you that Christ lives. It is revelation to feel a forgiveness of sins when you repent. It is revelation to know and understand gospel truth. It is revelation to act by the influence of the Holy Spirit. God reveals his truth to his prophets and apostles today. Each of God's children can receive revelation for themselves. Article of Faith number 10. We believe in the literal gathering of Israel and in the restoration of the ten tribes, that Zion, the New Jerusalem, 
will be built upon the American continent, that Christ will reign personally upon the earth, and that the earth will be renewed and receive its paradisiacal glory. Many try to spiritualize all concepts in scripture. They say the flood wasn't global, that the Red Sea didn't really part, or that Christ resurrected without his body. Not so. That is why the word literal is so important. We believe that all lost and scattered remnants of the house of Israel, many who are mixed in throughout various nations, some without even a knowledge of these things, will be literally gathered together and a new Jerusalem will be built on the American continent. Then, during Christ's millennial reign, as is said in Isaiah 2.3, out of Zion, or the new Jerusalem, shall go forth the law and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem, or the Jerusalem of old. Article of Faith 11. We claim the privilege of worshiping Almighty God according to the dictates of our own conscience, and allow all men the same privilege. Let them worship how, where, or what they may. This speaks to the free agency of man. Free agency is a gift from God. This article of faith speaks to the oppression of the saints in Joseph Smith's day. Article of Faith 12 We believe in being subject to kings, presidents, rulers, and magistrates in obeying, honoring, and sustaining the law. We want to be a people of order, not of chaos. We sustain the law and strive to be governed by righteous civil servants. We are encouraged to participate as much as possible in developing righteous governance where we live. Article of Faith number 13 we believe in being honest, true, chaste, benevolent, virtuous, and in doing good to all men. Indeed, we may say that we follow the admonition of Paul. We believe all things, we hope all things, we have endured many things, and hope to be able to endure all things. If there is anything virtuous, lovely, or of good report, or praiseworthy, we seek after these things. All good things come from Christ and anything that comes from Christ we seek after these things. Joseph Smith